And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell and today we're taking a look at Concordia Venus. Now Concordia Venus came out two different ways. You could buy it just as the expansion or you could buy it with the base game. You could go to the store and just buy Concordia Venus and play Concordia if you've never heard of it before. This review specifically is just kind of an overview, a look. I want to talk a little bit about the team play variant in Concordia Venus. So I'm assuming if you're watching this, you already know how to play Concordia. If you don't, I did a review on Concordia. You can go check that out. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the changes here. So this is kind of a short thing. I want to show you a little bit about what the game, uh, what kind of the new stuff that you'll find in this. And then, I mean, the big thing about Concordia Venus is that you can play as a team and you can even play six players, three teams of two. How does that work? Let me show you. So first we're going to look at the boards. This comes with a new double-sided board. We have Hellas. And over here, Ionium. Uh, I don't know enough about the different boards that are included in Concordia. So in my base set of Concordia, we also have, you know, essentially Imperium and Cyprus. And I know the boards are different and they have various intricacies and things. Uh, I just kind of look at the board and say, how does it work? Uh, I will say that I did enjoy this board a lot, the Hellas board. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, it's hard for me to tell the differences between these boards. But it does give more options. And, uh, you know, everyone kind of likes the different options that are included in any particular game. So why is this expansion called Concordia Venus? That's because there's a new way to score here with Venus, where if you have two houses in the same province, you can get points. And uh, the Venus starts on a starting card that everyone has called Magistar, although there are other cards that also have the Venus scoring on them. So uh, here you use your own top face-up personality card once again. Basically, it just lets you duplicate a card you've already played, except for Senator. So I play a Prefect. I want to play Prefect again, I play the Magister. That's nice, it's something I like. If you want to play the same action twice in a row, it's a nice card to have. It doesn't like fundamentally change the game, but what does fundamentally change the game is the fact now of team play. So let's pull back just a bit here. So let's take a look here, we got some yellow cards. So in these yellow cards, on the front of them, you're going to, let's, on the front of the yellow cards, you'll notice that there's nothing on this card or this card, but here we have double rings. And double rings means they're used in a team play game. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards that are used in a team play game. So the Tribune, Legatus, Mercator, Praetor, Prefect, Diplomat, and Architect. However, it's not quite true because in a team game, you're going to be teamed up with another player. And one of the players is going to get rid of the Diplomat card, and the other player is going to get rid of the Architect. So only one of you has the Architect, and only one of you has the Diplomat. So you're going to start with six cards each. So in this game, you're going to play a card on your turn. So let's say I play the Tribune. And you will take the action of this card, and then your teammate will also take the action of this card. If for some reason there's multiple actions on the card, you pick which one. And partners are going to pick their own card. You can't be told by your partner which card to pick. So I can't say, hey, Susan, you need to play this card. No, she has to pick it herself. So it actually tells you at the beginning of the game you got to try to figure out how you're going to communicate back and forth, and you got to kind of understand your partner. So as you play these cards, so I play this card that on their turn, maybe they'll play the Legatus, and then I take that action, it comes back to me, I play the Mercator, and so on and so forth. So we're going to go back and forth as we play these cards. So when, again, remember when there's multiple personalities, these will come back. Now there's a couple cards that are specific to this team play. First of all is the Praetor. Here, you purchase a new personality card and put it in your hand, replenish the display only after your partner's purchase. So this one is specifically for the, both players. So you both buy a card. However, specifically, you can't replenish the display until both of you buy a card. 
Also, we want to point out here the legatus here. Your partner plays a card before you can inspect his cards or recommend one. So this is the one time where you don't have the cards you want to play, so you play the legatus. You're like, partner, you play the card. So you're basically giving them your turn, although you both take a turn. You look at their hands and you say, you should play this card. Now they may or may not play the card. That's totally up to, to them, but you at least can give them the advice to do so. There's also a card in the deck, the Pro Council, when you, you purchase a card, one new personality card without additional cost, and put it in your hand. Then your partner plays a card, but only they do the card, not you. So this is kind of, I'll do one action, you do the other action. Otherwise, the game plays pretty much the same. You can't share anything with the exception of money. If your partner needs some money, they can take it from you, and you can't say yes or no to that. So when one person finishes their last turn, they buy the last personality card, all other teams get one last turn, and then whoever has the most victory points wins the game. So as a team, you just add your two victory point sums together, and whoever has the higher victory amount is the winner. So if you buy the base game here, uh, you can buy this as an expansion or as a base game. If you buy the base game, uh, you just get the original game in the box as well as the expansion. It comes with the two boards. It also comes with this extra board that you'll use if you're using one of the bigger maps on it. Um, it has a rule book that's included with the game as well as a game setup that explains how to do it. And it mentions if things are going to be used in team play or solo mode. And again, it's pretty easy as you look at the cards, you're just looking for these double rings. Those are the team play ones, and then the solo is without those. So that's kind of an, an easy way to tell it apart. And at the same time, you barely notice it unless you're looking for it itself. Uh, the reference cards are updated to add Venus to them. And of course, all the components are pretty much the same quality as the original game. It's good components. So first, let's talk about the non-team stuff first. So the new card, I like the new card. The new scoring for Venus, I like that. The new maps, great. But I have, in, in Euro games like this, for me, again, I have the hardest time remembering one map from the other. Uh, some games like Power Grid, they have special rules on the different maps. These are just kind of different maps. Uh, this happens with a lot of Matt Gertz games. You know, Hamburgum and his other games are the same way. I'm like, oh, it's a new map. I, there's nuances and stuff, but I mean, I guess unless you play dozens of times, I wouldn't be able to really tell the difference between all those. But, that being said, I do like that they sold it into two different packages. I like that you can buy this and just get two boards and get a whole pile of stuff. That's fantastic. So, that's neat. Uh, I don't know that I would get this just for that, but if you're jumping in and never played Concordia before, this is a great entry into the, the series. Um, and I still think Concordia is a fantastic game, if I haven't made that clear. So team play. Team play is a tricky thing. I was a little concerned about this because team play, six players, I was like, ah, oh, I very rarely want to play a Euro game that's oh, more than four players, usually. Six players, and I was like, man, there's a lot going on. But it was not as bad as I feared. You get to go every three players. You go, then your partner goes, then the next person goes, next person goes, then your partner goes, and you go. And that's kind of neat. That's, that's pretty, it works really well in some of the cards and working together. You're kind of saying, okay, I'll go here. There's a little bit of interaction because uh, you don't want necessarily want to cross each other. In Concordia, there, certainly there's, you know, fighting for resources or you can even set your opponent up. There's, that's one of the things I really like about this, like flipping over a resource and then letting your opponent get all the money. I mean, your partner get all the money. I think that, that, that's kind of a neat concept and the fact that there's some cards that work well with each other. The issue that you're going to run into, the issue I ran into, is communication, right? How much communication is allowed? I played in a game where one of the teams literally was played by one person. That person played their card. When it was their opponent's turn, they said, this is the card you should play. We tried to quash it, but it, it, it's a hard thing. So you're going to have to take this into effect with your group. Like, are you going to allow people to tell their opponents what cards they can play, or even hint towards it. Boy, I wish someone would play this. Uh, I would lean towards as little communication as possible about that, and just play the card you, that it's your turn to play. And if your teammate goes, well, too bad. And there is a card in there specifically where you can look at your opponent's hand, your partner's hand and say, please play this card. That card has no meaning almost if 
I mean, yes, your partner still plays the card, not you. But if, the, if you let communication get too high. I also, while the six-player game wasn't too long, it makes a nice little partnership game, two versus two. Now, do I like Concordia as a partner game over playing it by myself? No. The partnership game is certainly interesting, but I kind of want to do my own strategies and my own thing. And while I don't mind working with other people, team games are a lot of fun, this one is one that I'll play it, partners. That's not a big deal. I'll have a good time with it. But I think I'd rather play it by myself. But what I, again, I can't stress how much I like the fact that this set allows me to play solo, to play team, to play two diff well, four different maps because they both have two sides. That's a lot of value. And on top of that, remembering how great of a game Concordia is. So can't really say anything bad about this expansion. I don't think the team variants for everybody. Uh, and I think that you really need to watch communication in it. But there's enough new stuff in here without overwhelming the old stuff. It doesn't turn it into another game. Or even throw you off. You'll play with, with some Concordia players if they're casual, and they might not even know what new card has been added. So that's Concordia Venus, a nice expansion. Dice Tower Judgment approved.